Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie. Welcome to this tricks and technique video. Today we're going to be looking at mica powder. Now I know some of you are now thinking, oh that's a bit scary, I don't know what that is, I don't know how to use it, I've never heard of it. Well mica powder is something that can give you a really pretty effect. You don't need a lot of, it's very economical and it's so packed with pigment and shimmer and shine that any project will just, it'll enhance it. I want to show you how to use it and dispel a couple of the myths. This is my pot of mica powder. It's by Cosmic Shimmer and it says on the top of it, an iridescent mica powder, uh, sorry, mica pigment. It's a Phil Martin one. I purchased it from the large auction site. This one is decadent oak. You get 10 mils of mica powder in the pot. I'm going to give it a tap because when you open it uh, sometimes it can stick to the lid. So this is how it looks when you open the pot. It is a powder, a very fine milled powder. If it were a face powder or a flower, it would be classed as the third mill. So it would have been through the mill three times to make it that fine. It's, I would say it's even finer than icing sugar. So that is our mica powder. The first tip I'm going to give you is work on a piece of scrap paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and I'm going to stamp an image. I'm going to use a stamp mat just because it will help me get a perfect image. And that's my piece of card I'm going to use. The image I'm going to use is one that you've seen a few times over the tips and tri uh, tricks and techniques. It's from Spellbinders and it's the Happy Heart. I'll put the details of it at the bottom. I'm using a perfect medium ink pad by Ranger. My ink pad is very old. It looks like that. When you get a new one, it's a very lot lighter basically in colour. But I don't want you thinking, oh, that looks sort of like a black ink. It isn't, it's clear. And I've had mine, as I say, quite a while. I keep refilling it. It's not like a normal ink. It's quite sticky and it's perfect for embossing, heat embossing and using with your mica powders anything that's going to stick to it but not a glitter because you, it's not a glue. It's just a tacky ink. So now I've inked my stamp. I'm going to hold my breath and try and stamp it so that it's a good stamped image for you and stamping around a camera looking through the lens isn't ideal so let's just hope I've managed to stamp it nicely so let's have a look now you can see what I mean about the perfect medium where you can't really see it, only very lightly. There used to be one, um, I think it was a verse mark, that was very similar. And when you stamped it onto paper, it just gave you like a watermark effect. So I'm kind of happy with that. And I'm going to remove my stamp mark. So next, what I'm going to do is, I've got an old brush. Now, this could be any brush. It could be an old blusher brush, makeup brush, anything like that. As long as it's clean. And I'm going to go into my mica powder. And I'm going to dip in my brush. And I'm just going to dot it on the image in a few places like that. I want to make sure I've got enough on but I don't need any more than that. I'm going to tap my brush just to make sure I haven't got any loose blobs of it on the brush and then I'm just going to simply go in 
and swirl very very lightly with the mica powder and where the image has been stamped it will pick up the mica so you're now being able to see the stamped image I'm just going to go around again make sure I haven't missed anywhere okay so the excess you've got on your card if you've got a lot you can tip it back into your pot for now I'm just going to put the lid on my pot because see how it's all fallen out the lid oh, what a waste I can tip that back in later so next I'm going to go in with a piece of dry kitchen towel and I'm simply just going to remove the excess from the sheet like that so that's going on to our waste sheet underneath and then I'm going to just rub a little bit more take off all the excess still got a little bit at the bottom now I know some people mask the outside off because they don't want any of the colour on the outside which is fine so that is my image now I don't know if the camera can pick up the sheen that you get with the mica I'm going to come in really close and hopefully you can see a little bit of the shimmer there we go this is uncoated white card so you can see that and it's picked up the detail of the stamped image perfectly and I think that is just so cool really now the next effect that you can do is something that we've done with the foiling just to give that image a little bit extra we're going to go in around the edge with our ink pad now I'm just going to do the top and the bottom and I'm simply tapping it on the edge like that just to get a little bit of the ink on there because I think that's going to finish off our stamped heart perfectly so I'll put my ink pad away and then this little bit of excess that we've got on our paper from the lid we can just take it around the edge like that top and bottom and hopefully that will just give it a little bit of a border like so and again for the top so it's just catching where we tapped it with the ink and again now we're going to take the excess away and where the ink was it sticks there we go one thing if you've got an anti-static mat before you start you can use your anti-static mat across the top of your paper so that'll help with fingerprints or anything I'm using white so it's not picked up any of mine luckily but an anti-static mat you would just rub it across then stamp your image and add your mica and then it's got rid of anything that was on the card beforehand so that is perfect to show you how to use the mica powder and ideal for your stamping and just adding a little bit of shimmer and metallicness to the to you know the corners of your card now another thing that you can do with your mica powder because it is absolutely full of colour is you can use it to paint with 
Now it's very similar to the pixie powder. I'm not going to paint anything that um, requires any effort and I'm just going to make sure my brush is clean which I'll just check it on some paper towel like so. Now mica powder you need to, you don't want to be going into your pot. What you can do is use it from the lid. So we'll open this up and we're going to simply drop a little bit of water into the lid and swirl round and then we've got it to use on our paper for whatever we want to do whether we're making a background and just add a little bit of sheen we can pick up a bit more colour if we want it to go darker like so and just keep going with our paint and then once this dries it actually turns back to powder so you're not hurting a the rest of your tub you're dipping in and using it in the lid but when it dries it isn't going to affect anything that you've got in your tub already and you can also go back in with water again and mix it and it'll come back to life again the only thing I wouldn't do is go into your powder and put water in there just use a little bit on your lid and you've got it mixed there don't be um, adding too much water. If you think you've got more of a river in there, dry it before you put your top back on. But then you can paint with it, you can make backgrounds. You can do so much with your mica powders because they are packed full of colour. Now I'm putting the lid back on. I'm not worried about it having a little bit of water at the top. It's not going to affect it because there was hardly anything there. And that is how we use mica powders. And I just hope it's kind of helped to give you an insight into what you can do with them. They're not scary. I personally, for stamped images, I think they look great. I really do. I'm not into the painting with them, but I wanted to show you the technique. For anybody who likes the mixed media, mixed out the textures things like that they'd be fantastic so but you know me i'm more of a, a clean project person however you know times and places and all that um everybody's different but i just hope it's taken a little bit of the stigma away from what to do with micro powders and given you a few hints of what you can do and um, especially with your stamping so once again i'd just like to say thank you so much for watching i appreciate each and every view and i know that this isn't everybody's cup of tea but if you do watch thank you so much if you don't watch then there's another video out there that i've made that's just for you instead please share please pass on the crafty knowledge and i just hope you're enjoying it as much as I am really because this has given me such a window to show you so many different products so thanks for watching and I shall see you again next time